Hello and welcome to Cracking the Cryptics bonus content for today. Um, today I'm looking at a variant called Rossini Sudoku which features in this weekend's Sudoku Grand Prix. If you're at all interested in speed solving, do Google Sudoku GP and check out the Grand Prix series which runs during the first half of the year once a month. This weekend's contest has been set by India and Akash Dulani, who is I think one of the setters, has posted also this puzzle as practice for people with Rossini Sudokus, which is a slightly rarer variant. Um, now the test, if you're going to do it, takes 90 minutes. You probably need a printer um, and you probably need to register with the World Puzzle Federation to give it a go, but it's certainly worth it. It's good fun. I will be trying it. Now, the rules in this puzzle, as well as normal Sudoku rules, we have arrows outside the grid, and these show for the three cells looking into the grid from where the arrow is, whether they are a run of three cells that are ascending or descending. So the arrow is always kind of pointing in order of growth. So this could be one, two, three going up. So where they're pointing the other way, they have to ascend into the grid. And where there's no arrow, this is very important negative constraint, it means there isn't either a run of three ascending or descending. So there are quite a few places where there are no arrows around the grid and those will probably be important. So that's the rules of Rossini Sudoku. Maybe Rossini used to have a lot of uh, crescendos and decrescendos or notes going up and down, I don't know, anyway. Let's get cracking. You can try the puzzle on the link below the video, of course, before watching the solve. Now, here we have three arrows all pointing the same way. So we know that these are three ascending sets. So the nine in the, in the box must be in one of these three at the top of its set. And this arrow tells us which one. This must be the nine. In exactly the same way, um, the one must be at the bottom of one of these three sets and at the bottom of this this run of three so it has to be here so at least that gets us started now in mean, in a way it's a bit like a thermo running around there and another one running around there because first of all this arrow takes that one grows it to here to another number ascends to here ascends to here ascends to here because of this arrow but I don't know which the other numbers are. I'm not sure it's worth writing them in. Um, does the one help us over here? Oh, well, look. Yes, yes, yes. We've got three arrows here. They're not pointing the same way. But in a way, that's more helpful because of this arrow. So that thermo idea really works here. If you follow this line round, the numbers have to be increasing all the way because of this arrow saying they're increasing here. This one says they keep on around here, and this one says they keep on around here. So I am just like I would with a long thermometer. I'm going to fill in the possibilities as these numbers have to increase all the way around. Um, and there's another arrow in the box, okay, and these have to increase up to a maximum of six. So four digits in each cell makes that work. And now we can see, I mean, there'll be other ways of de deducing this from looking at those arrows, but where is the nine in the box? There's only one place it can be, it has to be here. The other way of looking at it is it would have to be at the top of one of those arrows and that's not possible because of this arrow. So it has to be at the end of this run. So that's the nine, eight, that's placed, seven, only one possibility, six, only one again. Now we have to stop there because there are two possible five cells, but that's a fantastic start on getting numbers in the grid. Um, I might put in the possibles here as well, just in case that helps, maybe later, maybe now. Five, that can't be six because there's already six in the row. Uh, there's quite a few possibilities there, so it's not all that helpful. Um, but we've got two nines here and nine therefore in row two must be in this box 
and nine and one can never be in the middle of one of these runs of threes with an arrow because they'd have to go up to nine and down from it or down to one and up. So nine cannot be there or there. We can place nine here. Similarly, one can't be there or there. So one has to be in the, because of this one ruling out these three cells as well, one has to be in the top row of box two and it can't be there or there because they have to be the top numbers of their runs. So I'm going to put one in there. That takes one out of there, two out of there, three out of there. That makes this the one in the box. Excellent. Um, Ah, uh, okay, I said this is important and it's really important. The negative arrows, don't forget where there is, sorry, the negative constraint where there is no arrow. This is the run of three I'm looking at. Now, this is not an ascending order run from here to here or else there would be an arrow. Therefore, this cell has to be higher than this one. So this is two or three here. And that forms a two or three pair. We can now place four and five in the box as well. So we can take four or five out of those possibilities. Now that's really good. Um, what else does that give us? Yeah, these, these arrows, I felt they were pointing the wrong way. They're very useful. Look, what, where can two go in the top row? That's the question to ask. Where can two go in this row? Well, it's been ruled out of six of the cells already. Can two be here or here? No, because they have to be the highest number in these three. So two has to be here. We get a three here. The same question applies with a three because we've put a one in this box already. So it can't go three, two, one, because that would need another one. So three can't be here or here. It has to be here. And this, is, this arrow means that we can place the two as well. Get rid of two or three from there, three or four there, and four or five there. Okay, so, but let's remember this ne negative constraint as well over these three. How can this work? Well, yeah, this could be higher than both or lower. So we've got four, five, seven, or eight. Couldn't actually be a five because then that would have to be four and this would have to be higher, but it could actually be one of the others. Okay, that didn't help there. Now these two are from six, seven, and eight. This one's in the same column as the given six, so we can get rid of six. Um, these two are four, five, seven, or eight. Now that means two and three. Yeah, we've got two and three in rows one and two. Two and three have to be here. So I'm going to fill those in as possibilities. We've got quite a lot done of the top section, rather more than I was expecting just from arrows. I mean, we've barely used the um, givens at all. Now what else? can we do? There's a lot of arrows down here and nine can't be in those three because of the nine we've placed. It's got to be at the top of one of these two arrows so we can rule out those cells and it's got to be at the top of that arrow so we can rule out that cell. This is the nine in this box. That's good. Can we do the one? We've got a one place so we can rule out those. One's always got to be at the bottom so we can rule out those but I think one could be in either of those remaining cells. I'm going to pencil mark it in. Um, yeah, we can't get much further there, I don't think, unless I'm missing something, which is always possible. Ah, now, yeah, okay, look at these arrows are pointing different ways, and look at this one. That gives us this run of five, which is another thermometer, effectively, that starts here. So that has to be less than that. It has to increase to there, to there, and there. So this is one, two, three, or four. This is two or five, can't be higher, because this is five or six. This is six or seven, can't be eight, because we've already got an eight in the column. This must be eight or nine, higher than six and not seven. And what 
what's that telling us? Well, nine, which is not in those three, and that nine, yeah, the nine's restricted to those two cells. <clears throat> and that means, combined with that nine, nine has to be in one of these three, can't be in the middle one. Remember the rule about it can nine and one can never be in the middle of a run of three, so nine has to be in one of those two positions. And one, one's the same. Oh, that's nice. One can't be in any of those three. Um, has to be in one of these two. Can't be in that one. Yeah, so one is in one of those two. And therefore, same thing, has to be in one of those three. Can't be there. So in fact, here we've got a one nine pair. It's quite surprising. I wish it helped more. Um, these have to increase. Yeah, we're, we've done, we've kind of used that thermo around there. What else can we see? Okay, nines. Yeah, look, this nine is ruling out these three cells for box eight. This nine is ruling out those two. This arrow means it can't be in these two because it has to be at the top of this run if it was in it. So nines in one of those as well as one of those. Okay, but the fact that it's in one of these and there means that nine in box five is in one of those two cells. Nine here, nine here. Where's nine in column eight? One of these three, <laughs> but not this one. It can nev never be in the middle of a run. Three, so it has to be in one of those two. And those two little sort of dominoes which involve nines mean we've used up nines in rows five and six. So this can't be a nine after all. It's a one. And we can place the nine there. That's nice. Now, what else can we do with either those nines or the ones? No, maybe we can't do much else. That's irritating. Um, but let's keep looking for something we can do. Two, one, nine. Ah, oh. what? Yeah, this one can't be two, can it? Because that would require a one to be less. Now, if that can't be two, it's five, six, or seven. As this five, six, seven triple demonstrates, the only place for a two in this column now is here. And that puts a one here, it gets rid of the one possibility there. Gets rid of this one possibility, we can put one in the box. One must now be in one of those two because of the ones in columns eight and nine. Now what about two in this box? Can't be here or here because of that one. Those two are ruled out by this two. Can't be here or here because it has to be the smallest in that run of three and one's gone. So two is there, sorry. Full digit two is there. And two's in one of these three. Oh, and where's one? We've got these two ones. One must be here or here. It can't be here because that would be in the run of three right in the middle. That rule seems very important in this puzzle. That one and that one, that gives us a one nine pair here and we know which way around they are. Yes, so that fixes that one and nine. And we've got all the ones placed. Can we place the last nine? Yes, easy. Easy peasy. Nine's there. We'll rule out almost all the cells in this box. So nine can go in there and we can put the last nine in the grid here, which means this cell's an eight. Um, and don't forget the negative constraint. This is the three I'm looking at here. Looks like it almost has to be ascending, but there's no arrow. So this has to be higher than this. So this is six or seven. We get a six, seven pair. We can fill in five. 
and we get a 3-4 pair in the other two cells in the box. These are now a 2-3-4 triple. The givens take out a couple of the possibilities. That's not 5 anymore. This is ascending, so that's 7 or 8. Um, 5 must be in one of these two. Mm, don't quite know. Everything else seems to work. Yes, I made any mistakes. There it is quite possible to look at these arrows and suddenly see them the wrong way around somehow. Certainly I find that possible. Now what else can we do? This run of three that goes seems to go the wrong way is interesting. Look at that three. That's ruling out those two cells. Now those two cells are ruled out by that run of three because they would need something smaller than that here and two and one are gone. So three must be in one of these two. Um, and that means this is a four. Okay, that's a three. So now three is in one of these two in box eight. And four is now ruled out of all of these there's that four as well, remember. So fours in one of those. These have to ascend. Um, if... So that could be four. Could this be four? No, for an odd reason. If this one was four, that would push the two to here. This couldn't be three because these have to ascend. So the three would be here. So we'd have two and three and we'd have to have a bigger number and it'd have to be an arrow. So this is not the four. Four goes here. Wow. Okay, so we get rid of that four. Four and four. This can't be a four because it needs two smaller numbers below it. So this is the four in this box. Uh, these do ascend, so this is six, seven, or eight. Wow, four, two, nine. So this is lower than the four, and it can't be three. It's two, so we can get rid of the two from that box. This is now the three, clearly. That's where it's been pushed to. That's six, seven, or eight. So that negative arrow is right, so is that one. This has to be higher than six, seven, or eight. And seven's the highest it can be. So seven there, six there. That's fixed the seven, six pair, both of them. This is eight now. Three and five here, and we know the order from that arrow. Perfect. So this is six, seven, eight here. Now we don't get clues about central runs, but we know it can't be six because of the given. So we can put five in there. This is fascinating. Look, I've got a seven, eight pair. Is that genuine? Yes, it is. So these other two are five and three in this column. And I know which way around they are from the arrow. Still don't know which one of these two is two though. Um, but five's been ruled out of there. These have to go up, so this can't be eight either. So one of these is eight. This one isn't eight. Still this negative arrow has not been resolved completely. Um, okay, what else have we got then? If we can't work there. Oh, we've got a five, six, seven triple down here. This has to be smaller than that. So it's three or four. Actually six is not possible there because of the given. Five, six, seven, one, nine. Two's in one of these cells. Um, oh look, oh god, seven there has resolved this one. So that's the eight. That's not eight. Okay, so that works. Five, that five sees that cell, so that's a four. God, sorry, I mean, you've probably been noticing those bits either 
a short while before me or possibly a long while before me, in which case I apologise. But there we go. Don't see everything all the time. Um, let's get rid of the twos. That's a two six pair. This has to be two because of this arrow. Okay. That's six, one, nine, six. Let's get rid of the six there. We can put six in there. Um, don't spend too much time in the middle because it's not very helpful. Five, six, seven, nine. Okay, this is a two, four pair. Oh, we can do them. Okay, that's great. That's three, eight here. Three there. Three. Um, ah, the two four pairs resolved by this four as well. Oh, this has been resolved ages ago, so that eight's done. Yeah, sorry, I mean, I haven't been picking up all the clues. I've done some of the key um, bits of solve first and then missed some of the fairly obvious implications, I think, late on, but that's probably the better way around to be. So we get our finishing off now. And I think I've got it right. I'm not going to deny that it's possible to make a mistake on a Rossini and not really realize um, and that solve wouldn't be breaking anybody's records but that was quite a nice puzzle I liked the way it all worked together not much use doing the check function on this puzzle because it'll just tell us whether we've obeyed regular Sudoku rules it won't tell us if we've obeyed the arrows um, but certainly an interesting puzzle and as I say I do recommend the Sudoku Grand Prix. Of course, better than that still is to solve the puzzles on our apps and uh, have a look at our Patreon content, which is really quite fascinating this month. And thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you again soon on Cracking the Cryptic. Bye for now.